and we're in. You guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, it's been a little bit since we've done a review from inside my office and uh, and it's just time. Uh, there's a bunch of new stuff coming out. In fact, the whole world seems like it's on fire right now for Fujifilm. Hey, uh, congratulations to our friends over at Fuji for an enormous, uh, such a cool launch with the X100V. Uh, VI, sorry, the X100VI. It's, uh, it's a cool time to be a Fujifilm photographer and also a confusing one. I'm gonna tell you all about that as we talk today about the best mid-range lenses that Fujifilm makes. I think you're gonna be a little bit surprised about which ones I'm gonna go in for. And of course, my very favorite lens, we're gonna save it for last, but my favorite lens that Fujifilm has ever produced. And, uh, and I'm gonna talk you through exactly why as well as show you images uh, from that camera. Hey, first things first, my name is Miles Wood Boyer. If you Google me or you look up for me, I love to give this disclaimer. Yes, I am a Fujifilm X photographer. I've been with the global team now for quite a few years, but before you click out of this uh, video and before you just disregard it as some kind of paid advertisement, please let me let you know that Fujifilm doesn't do that, at least not for me. They don't even know I'm making this video, and so all of these opinions are my own, and uh, they're not in any way officially endorsed or affiliated with the opinions of Fujifilm. Blah, 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 let's go. All right, hey, first things first. Let's get right after the, uh, the, the, the topic of the day. So what I've done is I have pulled together four of uh, the, the mid-range lenses. What I mean by that is like a mid-zoom, somewhere between a uh, 45, 50 millimeter lens and a 65 millimeter lens on the spoiler alert GFX system. Now, if you know my work at all, you know I'm a huge proponent, big proponent of the Fujifilm GFX system. Now that's not a knock on the X system. I know a lot of photographers that make some incredible images from that APS-C system. I too shoot the, uh, the X-H2 from time to time and I love that little X100 series camera. But that being said, though I'm shooting this video right now on an X-C4, uh, all of my professional work is done on medium format. I'm just a huge believer in the magic that hides inside that system. And, uh, and so as we talk through the best lenses that Fujifilm has ever made, I think it's fair to say first that I think the best system Fujifilm has ever made is in the GFX system. Now, I have a whole video about why medium format is so special and what it is about the GFX 100 and 100S specifically that I have fallen in love with. If you'd like more information on that, there's a link in the show notes for that video. That being said, we're going to dive right in now into some of my favorite and actually my least favorite lens that has ever been made on the GFX system. All right. Let's start with the workhorse. This was the first lens that I ever actually purchased uh, for the GFX system. It is still to this day, probably my favorite or most used lens, though recently I've replaced it. Uh, spoiler alert there. This is the 63 millimeter F 2.8 lens from uh, Fujifilm. Now, as we talk through this, all of the lenses that we're gonna talk about except for one, and it's a very specific lens, are actually Fujifilm brand lenses. I could talk about that a little bit, but here's the easy answer, uh, the, the just like easy opinion here. I know that there are so many people out there that are huge brands of off, uh, are huge fans, I'm sorry, of off-brand lenses. There's nothing against that. I think sometimes that can be really cool. That being said, I like to work with the lenses that were designed for the camera that I shoot. And so maybe it's a trust issue. Maybe I've got my own problems there. Let's talk about the 63 2.8 though. Uh, this is an absolute workhorse of a, of, a, of a lens. Now I know on paper, I've heard people say this for years, it's slow to focus. And, uh, and because it was one of the early lenses that was released for this system, maybe it's a bit outdated. I would argue that it's the most reliable still lens that I put on this camera. Uh, if you know my work at all, you know that I shoot pretty high end weddings and it is always a part of every single wedding that I have to have a bride walking down the aisle to me in real time and the pressure is on. If I'm gonna shoot weddings, in a uh, medium format, uh, fairly slow to focus as, as compared to these lightning fast Canon and Sony systems. Uh, I've got to have a lens on the front of my camera that I can really trust. And this is that lens. It, it's, it doesn't jump around. It, is, uh, it locks. It's reliable. It's sharp. It's beautiful. It handles light really, really well. Uh, yeah, so the 63 millimeter f2.8. Now here is the one drawback from this lens. 2.8 is not super fast. 
In fact, I think we can all agree at this point with uh, a whole generation of these wild f1.2 lenses and then even the more rare like f095 lenses and that type of thing that a 2.8 lens feels almost a little bit archaic and maybe it is that said i still love it i'm a big believer in including environment in my shots so having a 2.8 doesn't slow me down that much but there are definitely times where i wish it was a little faster all right 2.8 Great lens, on to the next one. Did that give you guys a heart attack? That actually made me nervous that I did that. Okay, let's talk really quick. Let's go in to the worst, the absolute worst. Now I'm gonna mount this cam this lens on my camera here. I'm holding, again, this is the uh, GFX 100S. Love this camera. Um, oh my gosh, I have so many great things to say about this. But I'm gonna mount the lens on the camera here so that you can see the only good thing about this lens. Actually, genuinely, the only good thing about this lens is the size. So this is the 50 millimeter f3.5. Um, again, Fujifilm, guys, they got the size right. I mean, it's incredible. It's this little bitty thing. It's almost a pancake lens on the front of this big camera. Um, it looks funny, actually, mounted to the front of the GFX100. If I had grabbed that camera, I totally would show you that, but I don't have it here with me. Um, wait, no, I don't. Anyway, so... That's all. That's the only thing that they got right. I wish I had more information for you than that. Um, I'm going to show you images taken through all of these lenses throughout this entire video so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about and what I love and where the magic hides. Uh, by now, you've seen quite a few from the 63 millimeter from all over the place. And there's a lot of magic. You're not going to see any images from this lens because I have tried to make magic with it and it can't be done. Uh, it's just a boring lens. Also, it just resolves the light really poorly. So, um, kind of a bust there. That's a bum. Anyway, yeah, cool. I guess I could actually just like throw that. Oh, the heart attack again. Oy. Okay. All right, let's jump though, okay? Let's go to the one off-branded lens. We're getting closer, by the way, to my very favorite lens. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about why it's my very favorite. So, just hang tight, okay? Hang in there. Most of YouTube bails after like two minutes. You're not even going to get to the good stuff at that point. All right. Uh, this is the only off-brand lens that I have for the GFX system, literally that I own for the GFX system. Um, and I don't know how to say the name. I should have thought about that beforehand. It's Z-H-O-N-G-Y-I. Hey, YouTube trolls and haters, hit me in the comments with how you say... Z Zonghi? I don't know. Anyway, that one. Hey, this lens is a beast. Uh, you can't tell right now via this uh, recording, but I'm literally struggling holding this thing. It's like 746 pounds um, of pure steel. I don't even know why it is this heavy. It's an autofocus, I'm sorry, a manually focused 65 millimeter 1.4 lens. Now I got this before the next lens that I'm going to talk about my favorite, uh, before it came out. And the reason why is because I really wanted to see what 1.4 looked like on, uh, on this incredible GFX system. Now here's the cool thing. On one hand, the uh, quality of image out of this lens is not real high. I've had a number of people that have told me before that they, is it the Minnetonka lenses or whatever they are, that they're incredible. Well, this one, not so much, okay? Uh, that being said, um, as you see, uh, while I'm talking, you're gonna start to see these images pop through. There is something really special about the way that this lens sees light. It's almost very flawed, but there's a ton of character in it. And so um, the way that light, especially flares, come through this lens is, uh, is really, really unique. And I've had a lot of fun playing with this. Uh, in fact, actually, I've had a number of people compare these images to Sam Hurd's like Ring of Fire images and ask me if I'm doing the Ring of Fire, and I'm not. It's just done in, in the camera. So uh, painful to focus, especially at 1.4. Um, kind of painful to shoot. If this was my only lens, I would probably drop the camera out of the car and change professions. But as just sort of a fun thing to, uh, to throw in your bag. Now, it's, I'm not going to toss this one because it weighs 746 pounds uh, and it'll break something. Also, this is the one lens that when I'm on destination, uh, I don't travel with. It's too niche and it's cool, but it's just, it doesn't get used much. Okay, here we go. 
the best lens, no kidding, no exaggeration, the best lens that Fujifilm has ever made for the GFX system, especially in this sort of middle range uh, focal length, the 55. Now, guys, when this lens came out, I assumed that the whole world was going to go nuts about it. I don't know if maybe it was a timing game. Maybe like it was just sort of during a weird marketing time or maybe there was a lot of noise coming out from other companies. Uh, maybe other cameras were launching. Maybe the YouTubers didn't scream loud enough. Um, but I don't remember this thing making the splash that it should have. And so here's your splash. This is the official splash. The Fujifilm 55 millimeter f1.7, the GF, this thing is magic. It's absolutely magic. And I'm going to talk through really quick a few of the things that I love about it. Um, maybe a little bit of the headache that I had to go through to get to where I love it. And, uh, and we're going to dive in on that, okay? So, hey, first things first, let me mount it so you can see it. Um, again, on the GFX 100S, this is a pretty substantial lens. Now, it's hot. Like, let's call it what it is. That thing's got curves. Yeah, that's a sexy lens. Um, it's a pretty substantial lens, though. It weighs uh, a fair amount, nowhere near as much as that last thing does, but it's pretty heavy. I mean, it definitely adds some weight to the front, and the front optic is, uh, is nice and big. It says it's a 77 on the front, uh, which I totally believe. This thing is very large. Now, um, the thing that I love, love about this lens is not just the fact that it's 1.7. It is quick, it's snappy. The autofocus on it uh, reacts really, really rapidly and it is tack sharp. I mean, even at 1.7, fully reliably sharp. Now, I still shoot this lens at uh, 2.0 or 2.2 a lot. And the reason for that is because if you are not aware as a photographer, most lenses, almost all lenses will be at their sharpest about a stop or two um, uh, tight, or tighter than wide open. So find that range and play with it, and you're going to love me for that. Wide open lenses often are a little soft and a little milky. Now, this lens really is not, but I just like it a little bit more tightened down. That being said, at 1.7, the fall off and the bokeh from this thing on the medium format sensor is unbelievable, like untouched. Now, the only lens that I've ever played with that comes even close would be the 80 millimeter f1.7, also a favorite lens of mine, but that one is a little bit more specific. Like there's sort of like a use for that lens. Uh, a lot of you guys that are like hardcore portrait photographers might just love that lens, but I'm a wedding shooter and I like to have environment in my frames. And also I shoot almost all of my shots vertically. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's just a fad that I'm in, but because I shoot vertical, and I want environment, this 55 millimeter lens just gives me a lot of breath to play with and a lot of room to work with. Now, full disclosure, I had gotten so used to using that 63 millimeter on my uh, lens or on my camera for so long that I was really used to the idea that environment was always going to be a part of my shot. And when I first grabbed this lens, probably the only actual headache that I ran into was the fact that sometimes it almost felt too shallow. You guys, you heard me right. I, I think that's something that like most of our industry is like, wait a second, there's a few things you're not supposed to say. You're not supposed to say autofocus is too fast or that it shoots too many frames per second or that a frame is too shallow. All those things I disagree with. Actually, the reason I shoot a GF system is because I don't love cameras that shoot 140 frames per second or 20 or whatever the new fad is. That's annoying. You have to cull those images. And also, if you're shooting that desperately, you're probably not in control. So I don't love that. Autofocus that's so fast that it thinks faster than I do, kind of cool, but also mm, I like to be in control. I want to be the artist. Uh, and then with this lens, also like the fall off at some times, it was like a little bit too much. Not being a light, airy, soft, romantic photographer. I mean, like look in my office right now. It took me a little bit. It kind of took me a little bit to figure out how to shoot this lens and it not just feel like it was just blown out and overly soft. And then once I figured it out, oh man, the magic. So favorite lens ever created on the GFX system, the 55 millimeter F 1.7 GF uh, mount. You guys, this lens changes everything. Now, here's a few quick disclaimers I will tell you. 
I understand, I fully grasp that a lot of people in the comments are going to hit me with things like, these systems are so expensive, or uh, you can get so much more out of the Sony Alpha or the Canon whatever. And here's my, my bounce to that. First things first, I don't get all of this gear for free. You guys, that's just not the way the industry works. If you think that that's the fact or the case, you need to start commenting on the big YouTube names. Like, go ask Binge how much he pays for You guys, we buy our gear and it is expensive. But if you're not willing to invest in your brand and in the longevity of your image, you can't really expect that the legacy of that image is going to have any long-term value. And so I'm a big believer that you've got to kind of invest down the lane that you want to land in. Now, honorable mentions here. I mentioned the GF 80 millimeter, love that lens. The uh, GF 110 millimeter F2 is also a, a big, uh, big, incredible lens that we use a lot of. And maybe every once in a while, that 45. Now, you'll notice I didn't even bring the 45 into uh, this video, just out of the sense of authenticity. I just rarely shoot it. I like the 30 millimeter, but I don't shoot that 45 very often. And I don't know why. I've never really been able to figure out why. I love the 35 millimeter equivalent focal length. I love to grab my X100 and go play. And it's the same focal length, but there's something about that 45 that just feels kind of meh sort of bland. And it's the same thing that I would say about that 50 mil. It's kind of meh. But the 55 has magic all hidden inside of it. So that's what I got for you today. Go grab that 55 millimeter uh, f1.7. Questions, comments, I cannot wait to chat with you, interact with you about that. If you don't already like this channel, y'all, we're just putting out video after video right now, so freaking subscribe already. And hey, if there's one more video on your docket for today, just one more thing you're gonna watch, make sure you check out the Destination Wedding Crash Course that we released a few days ago. It is an absolutely rad way to see behind the scenes at an actual wedding with us in Mexico, how we plan, how we prep, and some of the work that goes into it. Thank you guys. 